Hi guys, Adam here again. So in the last video, we moved our SRP column, which is a calculation, over to the end of our table so that when we update our table contents from our source, it doesn't overwrite the RPE formula or the SRPE formula. We also created a second tab called data viz because it's important to segregate our data collection from our data visualization. So the first thing that we're gonna do and this is really quickly, is we're going to create another calculation. I'm going to click on column N, right-click, insert. Now I have a column 1. That's the default name for it. And I'm going to call it readiness score. And this is going to total up the stress, sleep quality, and energy scores, all being higher the better, into a compiled score called the readiness score. And the first thing I'm gonna do, just like with the SRP, is I'm gonna color code this so that I know it's a calculation. Similar to the SRPE, we don't need any fancy formulas. You know, equals stress plus sleep quality plus energy, enter. And then I'm gonna do the if error, just like we did with the SRPE where if there's an error, if error, if there's an error with anything going on in here, then I want it to be blank or a quote, quote, instead of uh, the general error message that you get. And you're going to notice later that the way that I did these formulas aren't accurate, but we'll go through that later. Let's go into the data viz. All right. This is how we're going to start. The, probably the quickest way to start, if we wanted to get an average of all of the metrics that we have, or most of them, we can go into our data entry, select all the column headers. I'm going to right-click, copy. Go into the data viz, right-click. I'm going to paste the values in there. And now we're going to use our first real Excel formula. So. Taking an average of a date doesn't really make sense, but you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. So we tell Excel equals, all right, I'm going to do a formula. If I start typing in the name of the formula, I know it's called average. Excel is going to give me some options. I can type it all out equals average. Now it's asking for numbers to take the average of. And we can do this in a couple ways, but I'm going to do it uh, the harder way first, or the more comprehensive way first, then the easier way second. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the data entry sheet, take an average of what? Well, an average of all the dates. So look at this. This is an important thing uh, to notice, and this is one of the reasons why tables are really valuable, is look, as I'm going through here, look what's happening here. It's saying A2 to A13. Um, which is okay, but it doesn't give me much context. But when I select all of the dates in the table, so this will change to the name of the table and the name of the column. So when I'm looking at these formulae, I know instantly what I'm looking at. And it's also an indicator for when I don't have everything that I need selected. Sorry, let me go back into this. I'm gonna do this again. Take an average, everything in data entry, all right, see, yeah, all right, I don't have everything in that in that column selected. Um, and when I do have everything in that column selected, then when I add new rows to this spreadsheet or the data updates, it automatically updates um, that information as well. Whereas that isn't necessarily the necessarily the case when when you have something like this. If you add in more information, it might only go between that range, and that you might not be including the the additional rows in that average calculation. So I'm going to take an average of that. And now I'm going to drag, I'm going to come to this bottom corner here where this green box is. There's going to be a crosshairs here. I'm going to click and hold and drag it across. And that's going to give me averages for all of these metrics because they're in that order in my data entry sheet. So if I were to click on stress, it should say average table atom stress. And it does. So that's good. Now I'm going to do this again, but do it in a quicker way. 
If you know the name of your table, this can be a very quick and easy process. I'm going to do this. I'm going to start the same way that I did. Equals average. Okay, great. Now it's asking me for an average of numbers. If I know the name of my table, which I do, it's TBL underscore Adam, I can start typing that in. Excel knows. It says, oh, he might be looking for something in table Adam. I'm just going to type it all out. After I do that, I'm going to do a bracket or an open bracket, not a parenthesis, but one of those square brackets. Once I do that, it's going to show me all of the columns in my table. Now, there are two ways I can go from here. I can either say, you know what? I want the date and then close a square bracket, close the parenthesis, and click enter. Or let me do that again. I do average table underscore Adam open bracket, oop, open bracket, and type in D-A-T-E, and close the bracket, and do a parenthesis. And in, in both of these cases, I'm going to highlight these both, click on the bottom here, and drag it across. And you'll notice that it does the exact same thing, and all the numbers are the same. We just did the same thing three different ways. So now we have averages for all these items. We don't need averages for all these items but we'll get to that in the next video.